Welcome to Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Alone in the Dark. I play on the Xbox Series X. It's also available on the Series S, PS5, and PC. So we'll start with the story. You play as either Edward Carnby or Emily Hartwood. Emily hired Edward to head down to a basically insane asylum that's not really an asylum called Dersetto, where she wants to meet her uncle who wrote her a fairly disturbing letter. Whether you play as Emily or Edward, once you get there, weird things kind of start to happen and it begins to blur the lines between the supernatural and madness. Are you crazy or is there something weird, spooky, and greater going on? And that leads into something that I like and think they could have done better at the same time in the story. I like that if you play through as Edward or Emily, they actually have different cutscenes and different events do occur. While the overall experience is the same, Emily will have more interactions with Ruth, where Edward will have more interactions with Grace and even cutscenes that they both have. They'll play out very differently, so I thought that was cool. I did appreciate that they didn't just make it this one kind of boring blanket experience for both characters, although again, overall experience the same, but they did add enough differences to make it actually worth playing through as both characters. There are also multiple endings that you get through collectibles and so on, but that leads me into one thing I think they could have done better, and I think they could have gone like full Resident Evil 2 and have like A scenario and B scenario. Because when you're playing through as Edward, every time you run into Emily, it seems like she's having a very different experience than you are, and vice versa. So it would be kind of cool if there was like Edward having his weird possible madness, possible supernatural stuff going on, and Emily not having that going on, and getting to play the that not going on side of things. It doesn't really impact the story. I think they did a good job. It was just something that popped into my brain that I think would have made the experience even better. Overall though, I really did enjoy Enjoy the story. I think the ending went in a direction I was not expecting, which I liked. Let's get into the audio, and the first thing I'm gonna say is the voiceover work is pretty good. There are some lines that I felt were delivered in a very flat manner that should have had some more emphasis on them, but overall, I think they did well enough. I don't think it's necessarily the most mind shattering I've experienced, but I think a lot of the characters did well bringing on these old timey accents from like the 1920s and having that tone and vibe. I think they did a good job with that. Oh, and I really enjoyed that instead of having to read every piece of document that I stumble upon throughout the game, they actually had somebody narrate all of those and it fit with the vibe of everything going on. I really actually thought that was a cool way of going about it. Like if you're reading a letter from Jeremy, it's Jeremy narrating it. Or if it's from Ruth, it'll be Ruth, etc. I thought that was a cool way of doing that. And I wish more games would do that because I personally think it helps the flow go on. As for the music, I was happy with the music. I think it did a good job emphasizing what's going on, giving you some kind of spooky vibes at times. And then you have the sound effects, which the first thing I'm going to say is the sound effects are very well designed. Hearing what's going on in the house around you and just all the other spooky noises, those are very well designed. The creature noises are good and creepy. Just overall sound design is well done. There are, however, some instances where it could be far better in execution. Like there was a point in time I was walking on a wooden floor with a carpet over it, but it sounded like I was walking in like a marble hall. Or I was climbing down a wooden ladder, but it sounded like an aluminum ladder. Things like that, like I normally probably wouldn't notice except for the part where all the other sound design is so good then to have that weirdness. And the other worst part is there is a huge desync in the audio when it comes to combat. The first time you swing a melee attack in combat, you're not gonna hear the sound in sync. You will swing, you will hit, and then you will hear the sound later. Later enough that it's very noticeable and it's every time you start a combat engagement or when you change your weapon in combat. Like if you start melee, you're gonna get that delay, but then you switch to pistol, your first pistol shot is going to be delayed in the audio department. Or if you start with the gun, it will be delayed and vice versa and all of that. The first attack with any new weapon is going to sound very delayed and it's really weird and it's every time. So that is incredibly noticeable. And it's really unfortunate because overall I was very happy with the sound effects, but there are these things that hold it back from being as good as it could be in that area. 
Let's move on to the gameplay mechanics and whatnot. Now, this is a third person survival horror game. It's got like a modern take on it, but you're playing in a 1920 world and you're doing, you know, traditional survival horror stuff. You need to get in this room. You got to find that key. You want to figure out how to move this bit along. Well, you got to solve a puzzle to do so. You ever play any survival horror game ever? It plays a lot like that, which is not a bad thing. I actually think it's a really good thing because I personally love that style of game. I will say that ammo and health was never particularly scarce, which is common in most survival horror games, not here, which is fine, but it's just something I noticed in case you're looking for that, you might want to bump up the difficulty or something. As I kind of mentioned earlier, there are a lot of collectibles and some of those collectibles matter. You get a certain set of collectibles, you'll actually get a shotgun. Others, you'll unlock secret objectives, which will lead to some of the other endings that you can get throughout the game. And one thing I didn't mention is another reason to play through as the multiple characters, the two characters, is that only some collectibles can be found by Edward or only some can be found by Emily. So it gives you a reason to go back through. I think the gameplay can be a little clunky at times, but I think overall it worked well. Specifically, the running felt clunky at times, as well as the combat unfortunately felt clunky. Specifically, probably the dodging, which also led to one of the larger issues I had with the game, and that was getting caught on geometry. There were definitely times where I'd be trying to get out of the way of an enemy or an enemy would hit me and I would get stuck on geometry somewhere that I couldn't get out of. And a couple of times it led to me dying. A couple of times I just had to go back to the last autosave. Fortunately, this game autosaves with a fair amount of frequency, so it wasn't a big problem. But I mean, it's still a problem. And it's still an obnoxious one that I really think shouldn't be there. Because it happened frequently enough to me that I'm like, there's no way that this did not happen in testing. Which, let's get on to the controls, and overall, they are good controls. Like I mentioned, a bit clunky in the combat area, and when you're sprinting specifically, the rest of the movement I think works well. There is one scene where they go back to old school with the fixed camera. There, the controls don't translate as nicely, unfortunately. But overall, they are responsive, they are well mapped, and like I said, just a bit clunky. Now let's get into the graphics and visuals, and this is definitely a double A game, survival horror realm currently, but they are good. I think they did a good job giving each of the characters their own flair, their own look, their own personality. But then going past that, Dersetto itself is kind of a character unto itself, and it's well laid out, well mapped, and it looks good, and it definitely fits with the whole 1920s vibe and that whole era that they've got going on. I think it's 1920s. I keep saying that. I could be very wrong on that. I was close. It's 1930s. I'm not going back and changing that. I do think it's well designed. I think they did a good job with the world that you are in. I think while it's not the most detailed thing we're going to see and it doesn't quite live up to the graphics that are available, you get the vibe and you get pulled into the world quite well. I mentioned it earlier, there are some creatures. I do think they could have had a greater variety of the creatures, but the ones that are there, I think are well designed and, you know, they fit with what's going on. Well, fit is a strong word. They fit in the sense that they're spooky, weird creatures that would freak people the hell out. But there's not exactly the same themes in this game that you might pick up in other games to have that level of fit. They're just kind of creepy, gross creatures that work. So to get into the wrap up, one comment I do have on the game as a whole is it never really hit the horror for me. I was never really scared playing this game. While I did enjoy their attempt at being creepy and whatnot, it just never creeped me out. It never got me to the point where I was legitimately scared of what was gonna happen next, what was going on. That is also not really a knock against this game because I think they tell a good story and overall, despite the issues, I think it's well designed. At the price tag, I think it's worth picking up, but I also think it's worth waiting just a little bit for some patching because there are issues that still need to be worked out. They definitely take you out of it. So recommended, but wait a little bit. Okay, in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, have you played any of the Alone in the Dark games? Hopefully you avoided the Xbox 360 ones. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.